so this is a uh, recap. So now, going into step one. Okay, we're saying how is the subroutine? <laughs> we argue that that can be done in linear time. The middle elements into a separate array C n over five. And now the median of the array C, remember C has length n over five, so the median is going to be the n over tenth order statistic of the array C. Now the way I recommend thinking about this, okay, I've broken into these two steps. I've used, used decomposition. I actually recommend kind of taking this rightmost board and sort of inline it into step into line one there. Okay, I think that helps keep track of rec recursive calls. So don't think of there being the separate subroutine, if you like. Just think of select itself having five lines of code. Okay, 1A, 1B, 1C, 2, and 3. Okay, and that's the entire output of those five lines. All right, so... I think we're going to be able to get Yeah. Um, who would you like to talk about briefly how many times you have to choose a pivot? Do you think that's better? How many times you have to choose a pivot? What do you mean? As in, uh, at the top level, how many times does it take you? How many times is it taking? So you choose, so I mean, conceptually, so let's talk about this, okay? So, fundamentally, this, so again, this is why I want you to think about inlining lines 1A through 1C over on the leftmost board, okay? So it's just five lines of code, okay? How many of those five lines are recursive calls? So what are the five lines, okay? How many recursive calls are there in those five lines? Two, okay? Just like, say, merge sort or other things we've seen. Okay, so there's a recursive call in 1C, and there's a recursive call in 3. Okay, so there's five lines, two of which are recursive calls on smaller subproblems, the other three of which do work outside of the recursive calls. Right, so what do we have? We have 1A, okay, so that does some little partial sorting, which you already argued is linear time, that's outside of the recursive calls. There's 1B, that's just copying over, so that's again linear time. There's step two, that's partitioning. Uh, the, uh, the original input array a, a around the pivot, we argued that's linear time, that again is outside of the recursive calls. So summarizing, we have five steps, three of which are not recursive calls and do linear work, two of which are recursive calls to smaller subproblems. Okay? So in essence, I mean, we could write down a recursion tree, for example, where we do linear work, we have a left child, we have a right child corresponding to two recursive calls, and so on. Okay, so at a high enough level, this algorithm is really not very different than something like merge sort. Two recursive calls plus linear work outside. What's the big difference from merge sort? And why are we going to need an alternative to the master method? There were two recursive calls in merge sort. The two recursive calls are in some sense fundamentally different. Okay, in particular, they're operating on input different sizes. Once the recursive call, it's very easy to figure out what is the input size. Which one is that? So in 1C, it's clear what's going on, right? We recurse on an array with n over 5 elements, always, when the original array had n elements. Okay, so we have a recursive call on a, on a, on a problem with size 20% of the original. Okay? But, you know, there's no reason to expect that when the recursion step 3, it's going to be on some array that has size 20% of the original. It might be 50%, it might be 70%, who knows what. Okay? So it's really, you know, we could write down a recursion tree, but because the subproblems have different sizes, we cannot apply the analysis we did Tuesday. 
Otherwise, there's nothing really fundamentally different. Okay? Two recursive calls, linear work outside the recursive calls. That's it. Questions? So I think what I meant is that every time you call step three, you're sort of throwing away part of your original array. That's right. Um, how many times do you call step three where it wasn't due to choose pivot at all? Does that make sense? Mm, could you rephrase? Yeah. Um, so if you look at if you look at every single recursive call to select, and you do a backtrace all the way up, either choose pivot is somewhere in the backtrace or not. Do you agree? Yes. How many of them don't have choose pivot? Does it matter? Um, kind of because. Uh, I'm going to suggest that uh, that's not the cleanest way to think about analyzing this algorithm. Okay, I'm going I'm to suggest that we uh, just treat it like merge sort and forget about why a select call is being called. Okay, so in some sense, we don't care why a given select call is being called. We just and again, the key point is, you know, two things are happening. We're chopping down on the input size, but we're spawning more recursive calls. And again, is it the forces of good or the forces of evil that went out? I think, uh, sorry. So. I, I think what I meant is that suppose that choose pivot just constant time and gave us the pivot that we in that case how would how fast would run okay, sorry what it gave, gave us the pivot that was we where the, the same pivot yeah. okay all right so here the question is does the work being done by choose pivot matter okay so this is looking ahead a little bit but this is something i can answer it doesn't matter okay so if choose pivot choose pivot is not going to be constant time um well, I mean, what can I tell you? I mean, we're going to prove a linear time bound at the end of the day. So, if you make choose pivot even faster, you're still going to be a linear time bound. I, I think it wasn't so. clear, but what I, what I really want to know is that if, if choose pivot wasn't a recursive algorithm and just gave us the right pivot in constant time, then how many recursive calls would we make in step three? Yeah, sorry. Right, well, let's talk about it afterwards. Yeah.